When it comes to subwoofers, or just speakers in general, the mainstream debate tends to center around sealed versus ported. All other enclosure types aside, this is the quintessential Mac versus PC discord among the hobbyists in the audio community. Even as we speak, someone out there is laying hand to keyboard in defense of one over the other. So I'm making this my sticky thread reference video on the subject, laying out some basics that we can build on instead of continuously coming back to which is better. I'll tell you which is better. Okay, sealed versus ported. Right away, let's dispel the notion that one of these will always outperform the other. Think of them the way you'd think of a spoon and a fork. Same overall purpose, but the one you reach for will obviously depend on what you're eating. So if you swear by sealed enclosures, you're just as wrong as the guy who swears by nothing but ported enclosures. And that being said, let's dive in. A sealed enclosure is an example of a second order acoustic network. First order applies as we separate the front wave from the back wave, and a second order applies as we confine the back wave to acoustic suspension. It's also worth noting that this holds true only when the compliance of the acoustic suspension is lower than that of the driver. If it's higher, Technically, it's an infinite baffle and an example of a first-order acoustic network. This is also the only instance where the chamber volume is literally the only difference between two distinct enclosure types. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to count enclosure orders, check out the links in the description. You'll be the life of the party. Party of one. Sealed enclosures are at their best with low efficiency bandwidth product drivers. This breaks down to low free air resonance and soft electrical damping. The inherent benefit of a sealed enclosure is accuracy. When people say that sealed enclosures are for SQ, that's actually objectively true, especially when we define sound quality by the absence of distortion. And by distortion, I mean any deviation from or misrepresentation of the source signal, whether in terms of phase or dynamics or frequency response. Let's say that your bass is up six decibels above everything else. That's an example of distortion, six decibels worth. Your speakers are lying to you about what's happening down in that region. In any case, the fidelity of a sealed enclosure is inherent in its physical simplicity. Mechanically, it's just a driver coupled to an air spring. And with the compression chamber as its only reactive element, there's actually very little there to interfere with the motion of the cone. It accelerates and decelerates right as the amplifier tells it to with minimal group delay, making it responsive to abrupt changes in the signal. And this simplicity also extends the shape of a sealed enclosure's response curve, which is basically just a single hump with an approximate 12 decibel per octave roll-off. That's 6 decibels per acoustic order, in case you've been wondering. And while the shape of the lower slope is determined by a series of damping factors, both of the driver and the enclosure, the shape of the upper slope depends largely on the driver's inductance. Either way, what's nice about a curve like that is how easily we can correct it even with the most basic of DSP functions. So that's the bill of goods, the only real drawback to which is the fact that half the driver's output is dissipated into the acoustic nothingness of a sealed cavity, making second-order enclosures quite inefficient. And this is where we come to ported enclosures. Just to clarify, strictly speaking, a ported enclosure is just that, an enclosure that makes some use of a port. And as you can see in my video entitled The Best Port Video Ever, there's quite a number of things that fit that bill. Also, in my 5 enclosures you've never heard of video, you can see that there's really no limit on ways in which ports can be arranged around compression chambers. I'll leave links to all that stuff down below, but for the purpose of this video, we'll take ported to mean 4th order base reflex, which is the general assumption in time somebody brings up the sealed versus ported argument. Structurally, the only difference between a sealed and a ported enclosure is the port, and this form of a ported enclosure is an example of a fourth order acoustic network. How did we get to fourth order from sealed? By venting the chamber we made two things happen. First, we introduced the reactance of the air mass inside the port, and second, we introduced the reactance between the front wave and the back wave. Vented enclosures tend to do well with higher efficiency bandwidth product drivers, which doesn't necessarily mean high free air resonance, but strong electrical damping is a big factor. By and large, the key benefit of a ported enclosure is efficiency, and it is achieved by reinforcing the direct output from the driver with a delayed after effect of the back wave. What this means for the listener is that the reinforcement doesn't actually occur until the second cycle of any given waveform, with an overhang beyond the last cycle as the output from the port is generally a step behind, especially as we near the tuning frequency. Ported enclosures are hence best suited for applications where some degree of speed and accuracy can be sacrificed for the benefit of improved efficiency along the base shelf. 
roughly three decibels worth. And of course, with it being a fourth order acoustic arrangement, we can expect a 24 decibel per octave roll off below the system's resonant point, with the upper slope once again subject to the driver's inductance, just like with the sealed example. There's also the benefit of the chamber compliance actually opposing what the driver does near the tuning frequency, which translates to more control over the excursion and better power handling within that general region. So, having established the mechanics between these two enclosure types, some fact-based decision-making can now be made. Whether you're a critical or a casual listener, whether you value quality over quantity, there is a pretty clear-cut choice between sealed and ported. So is that it? Well, no, there's still a few things that can confuse the issue, and this is where we transition from the factual to the anecdotal. I really want to emphasize a split between what we've just talked about and what we're getting ready to talk about, so here's a quick unboxing interlude. You know, I must have read all 40 some odd reviews for this thing on Amazon talking about the feel and the texture, yet not a single review actually rating it on its performance. Just a few one star reviews talking about this bullpit pillow didn't get me any new subscribers. Makeup tutorials. That's what it is, you gotta do more makeup tutorials. Fellas. One new notification from Amazon Shopping. Your 60 pound dumbbell set is out for delivery. Alright, we're back. It'll be fine. So it's been my observation that, to most people, the driver's compatibility with any particular enclosure style tends to be an afterthought, like long past the purchase. I got this super high efficiency bandwidth product sub because it looked so pretty with a big magnet. By the way, I need a no compromise SQ enclosure, so make it do, Mr. Wizard. And just like that, we find ourselves in the conundrum where the best enclosure for the job is not the best enclosure for the sub, at least between sealed and fourth order base reflex, at which point we're right back to speculating which is better. This is the bulk of what a design engineer contends with, making the best of some technical compromise. So when a fellow hobbyist tells you that in their experience, ported enclosures sound more accurate than sealed, right away you want to keep an eye out on whatever circumstantial compromise led them to that impression. Likewise, if they assert that sealed enclosures are louder than ported, again, they're glossing over some compromise that's allowing them to contradict what we already know about these two enclosure types. And a lot of it comes down to poor driver choice, which may not even be their fault. Certain manufacturers will market their subs as compatible with both sealed and ported enclosures when some acoustic modeling can demonstrate otherwise. So what will generally happen is that a stereo shop will look up the recommended box, grab a prefab that near as makes no difference matches it, stick the sub in and send the client on their way with a bad experience. Think I'm kidding? Show off hands, who's been on the receiving end of something like this? I'd like to read your stories in the comments. Part of the reason prefabs carry such a bad rap has to do with false claims of compatibility from certain manufacturers trying to market a one sub fits all solution to car audio shops that rely on a small product line to cover all their bases. But I digress. How do we minimize the confusion? Education. Videos like this, Amazon has some really useful reference volumes which I'll link down below. There's also a number of websites and online DIY communities with good people willing to help. Ultimately, however much you're looking to invest in your stereo, you decide how much homework that investment is worth. So hit that like button if you're interested in more videos of this sort, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!